When most people leave your teachings, they say it's because they know that you're not Jesus. Mm. What reasons do they give you as to why they can't believe that you're Jesus? Um, I would say the majority of people who say that they can't believe I'm Jesus is because I've said something um, that they believe um, isn't true about themselves, right? So, you know, I might, they might have come up and asked me, how do, I, how do I feel about their position with something? And most of the time they expect me to answer a certain way because they expect Jesus to answer a certain way. And, of course, when I just tell them the truth, usually they can't handle that truth, generally emotionally, and so what they do is they get upset. And then, of course, they're looking for a reason to not listen to it. And, of course, the, the easiest justification is he's not Jesus anyway, so I don't have to listen to him. So do you, would you say that the most common thing is that they don't give you a reason? The majority of people don't give me a reason other than saying that um, they know that I'm not Jesus. And I ask them how they know, and they just say, oftentimes they just say, I just know. And that's it. But I know the majority of times why they have left. The majority of times I understand why they've left, because I've told them in advance what their issues are, that I know they'd eventually leave, as mm -hmm. a, the, listening to the divine truth, as a, as a, and use those particular things as reasons to leave. So for the majority of people... It is all about this issue of whenever they have an emotional confrontation of a belief system inside of themselves that they can't emotionally or believe they can't emotionally handle, they revert to the excuse of he's not Jesus so I'm not listening to him. But ironically, they will still listen to everybody else even though everybody else isn't Jesus either. Right? Mm. <laughs> so that tells me it's not a very logical decision you still listen to your wife and she's not Jesus. You know, you still listen to your father and he's not Jesus. You still listen to your friends and they're not Jesus. And so you're saying you're not listening to the one guy because he's saying he's Jesus, right? That doesn't make much sense, particularly when you listened to him before and you thought everything he said was logical about everyone else. <laughs> so a lot of the, most of the time um, it's been to totally because of that one reason. So you said something they couldn't agree with? Yes, or you, they have an expectation of you to be a certain way that you aren't? Yes, and in that regard, an uh, expectation that I'll be a certain way. For example, that most people have an expectation that I know everything. And I'm going, well, you, do you know everything? So I'm a person. I'm telling you I'm a man and I don't know everything because I'm a man. I'm not omniscient. You know, I'm, not, I'm not God. I keep telling people I'm not God. And they go, but, but Jesus would know everything. I go, no, Jesus doesn't know everything. I'm sorry, I'm Jesus and I don't know everything. I'm telling you, Jesus doesn't know everything. And logically, it's impossible for me to know everything, actually. Because from, from God's perspective, God is infinite. All of God's truths are infinite. I'm a finite man who is slowly learning more and more of God's truths. At any one point in time, I will not know everything. I can't. In fact, my opinion is I know very little. <laughs> And, uh, and if you expect me to know everything, then you're expecting me to be God. That's not very reasonable when I've told you that I'm not God. <laughs> so even their expectations are way out of harmony with what I'm teaching. So if a person, after listening to me, says, oh, you're not Jesus because you didn't get everything right, I go, but I've said I don't get everything right before I began. Before you knew me, I was saying that I didn't, don't get everything right. Even after I become at one with God, I'm not going to get everything right because knowledge is not the worry. The issue from God's perspective in terms of perfection is, are you perfect in love? Not are you perfect in knowledge. The only being in the universe who's perfect in knowledge is a person who doesn't exist in the universe, and that's God. God doesn't exist in the universe even because God's more infinite than the universe itself. So... God doesn't exist in the universe and God's the only person with all the knowledge, with all the truth. God's the only person. And if you expect me to be in the universe and be all-knowing, it's a physical impossibility because to be all-knowing, all I'd have to exist larger than the universe. And that's a physical impossibility too. So you're asking a lot of physical impossibilities by expecting me to be all-knowing. Scientifically, it's impossible for me to be all-knowing and exist inside the universe. 
So it makes no sense from a scientific perspective, from a physical perspective, from a spiritual perspective. It makes no sense at all that a person requires that I know everything. And yet there's a lot of people who come along to seminars and when I don't have an answer for them, they go, well, he should know he's Jesus. Right? Basically you're saying he should know he's God. And I've already told you I'm not God. So you're not believing me when I say I'm not God. You expect me to be God. Jesus isn't God, never will be God, never can be God, because I am a created soul just the same as you are. That's the whole point. <laughs> you know? mm. So that, there's another, that's another reason why people feel that I can't be Jesus, because I'm not all-knowing. And I say, yeah, I'm not all-knowing. Yeah. Another reason why they say I can't be Jesus is because I make mistakes. But I say, of course I make mistakes. That's how you learn, actually, <laughs> by making mistakes. So you're expecting me to be perfect before I'm perfect. You're expecting me to be perfect in knowledge, and only God can be that. And you're expecting me perfect in love before I'm perfect, and I've told you I'm not. So how can you expect me to be perfect in everything I do? I don't understand. Why would you stop listening on that basis? I don't stop listening to you, even though I know you're not perfect. <laughs> so why do you stop listening to me just because I'm not perfect? Can you see, for some reason, the rules about Jesus apply differently to everybody else. That's how everybody thinks. It's not true. I'm under the same rules of the same laws and the same government as God, uh, as God has imposed upon every one of her children. So, but, but everyone wants to believe that somehow the rules don't apply to me, which is a part of their false beliefs, mm -hmm. again being challenged. Mm -hmm. And yet they leave divine truth because of that. Well, I would never leave divine truth because of that. But that's just me. <laughs> what other reasons are there that I can think of that people say that they can't believe in Jesus? There's quite a lot, you know, that all get back to the same statement that they can't believe on Jesus, so therefore they can't listen anymore. Mm. 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 You've, you know most of them yourself, don't you? So. Yeah, it's mainly to do with... Uh, I just see people get emotionally challenged by something that, that you do or their, their perception of love is that love um, pleases... Pandas. Pandas. Pandas to their addictions. Pleases their <coughs> addictions, makes mm. them feel comfortable all of the time. Yeah, not at all. And, and this is a, like, a, like a, the amount of times people come up to me and I can feel, yeah, you don't want the truth. You want to only hear what you are now going to ask me the question about and I know the answer you want already. I know, I know it before you begin. Right? I can feel it. I can even, a lot of times I can read people's minds. That's the truth. And I can feel their intention. Their intention is, ask a question, he'll give you the nice addiction being met because he's Jesus. He'll look after you. He'll make you feel good about yourself. And when I don't do that, they're just angry, angry, bitter and twisted. And there's been so many people that have come along to one seminar, came up, asked me a question. I give them an answer they don't want to hear and they never want to see me again and they spend the rest of their life criticising me on the internet. <laughs> just because they heard something they don't want to hear. Mm. And I find that's quite funny, really, and in some ways. It's sad. But I think it's sad for people. Well, it's I... funny in a way, too, because it, it just is an indication of how little they really wanted to hear the truth. They're claiming falsely to other people and themselves that they want to hear the truth. When they ask a question where somebody gives them the truth, they don't want to receive the answer. And, in fact, willing to abuse the person for the rest of their life that's an indication of how little they want to hear the truth. And it's see, quite funny. Yeah. <laughs> People live most of their lives like this. Like if they mm. say to their husband, does my bum look big in it? And he goes, well, yeah. Then, then most then women like, that's... Then a divorce. <laughs> well, not a divorce, but often like an no emotional... No sex for weeks on end. And <laughs> yeah. You said my mum's fat, so I'm not having sex with you now. Well, but, I mean, that's even more extreme than... Like most women maybe wouldn't be like that, but they would. there would be a chilling feeling towards of course. their husband for the next three hours. That's why most husbands are afraid to say it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's exactly the same thing. People don't want the truth and they're willing to be um, cruel in response to receiving the truth. Yes. They want to shoot the messenger, even mm. if the messenger is stating a truth. And, and even if they ask the question. And even if they ask the question. So they set up the messenger to be able to shoot him later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, you see this happening a lot in relationships and you see it happening a lot in life generally where people are set up 
so that you can shoot them down. And, and it, it's a cruel way of living your life mm. and it's certainly never going to be a life that's harmonious with God's love or God's laws and therefore never going to be a life of miracles <laughs> if we classify a miracle as living in harmony with God's higher laws. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I find it's... Uh, and although it's sad, it's a self-imposed thing that people have. So it's sad that they choose to do it, but it is also self-imposed. It's, a, it's, a, it's, to, it's to do with the degree of arrogance that the average person has towards receiving truth. They don't want to receive it. And why don't they want to receive it? Because they don't want to feel the emotion involved in receiving it. Mm. You know, so the woman who's got a fat backside doesn't want to feel she's got a fat backside, even when she knows she has. She doesn't want to feel it, right? And she knows she's got to do something about it. And she might even feel powerless about doing something yeah. about it because of how her addictions lead her to eat or whatever it is that causes her to do it, right, to put on the weight in those locations. But she doesn't still want to hear the truth. Mm. She's got all this hurt she doesn't want to feel. If she was willing to feel all the hurt, ironically, not only would she receive the truth, but the fat would fall off her backside. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the same as all of us, really, in the end of the day. Yeah. If we were open to receiving the truth, not only would we receive the truth, but there would be benefits to our life as a result of receiving the truth that we would feel the rest of our lives. 